All right, guys, welcome. Um, this tutorial series is going to be on creating your own regular expression uh, library, if you will. Um, the first half, I think, is going to be the most interesting half, which is really about getting the, uh, the, the algorithms correct that lets us, you know, do iteration and look aheads and look behinds and back references and backwards matching and a bunch of the really technical things. Because I think that's far more interesting than the first part, which is just a lexer that's going to take whatever, a string, and turn it into um, all of the tokens that I'm about to create. So uh, let's go ahead and create a new project. This is going to be, I'll make a console one here, and I'll call it um, regexlib. So regexlib is what I'm going to call my regular expression library. Uh, and so I will call it regexlib tutorial. The name of the solution is going to be regex lib okay so i start with the regex lib tutorial this is a console app that does nothing but dump jump to the screen and i'm going to add a new project which is the actual application library um, and this will be called regex lib What the hell? Let's try that again. Let's place a new folder with the same name. Project directory already exists. Oh, God. Okay. What do you need from me, people? There we go. Sorry. Had some uh, old folders hanging around. Okay. Let's go up to regexlib here. We can just wipe out that. doesn't mean anything. I got my program from regexlib tutorial. Uh, let's do the basic things like add references to regexlib from here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start basically from the beginning. And full disclosure, um, you're just looking at a guy here who likes to make YouTube videos and also is a fan of regular expressions um, and is a fan of programming as an exercise and a learning tool. So this particular uh, set of videos, I'm not ultra concerned about maximum efficiency and some of the boundary cases, which can cause infinite iteration and a bunch of things that you think about in I don't know, like a production quality regular expression engine. I'm more interested in kind of uh, seeing how a regular backtracking regular expression engine works under the hood. Uh, and that's really what this is about. So the first thing that you have to, well, the first thing I'm going to assume is I'm going to assume that you guys know what regular expressions are and you know how they work and you understand repetition and grouping and back references and uh, everything about them. Um, because I'm just going to use those phrases off the cuff and it's frankly not my job to explain them to you um it there's some excellent tutorials about them and the best one uh is actually the following i'll go ahead and pull it up regular expressions.info there it is um this guy is the guy that makes um not edit pad pro well maybe he does uh he makes uh gosh what's the name of his software that he does well, it's not on his homepage, so I can't find it. <sighs> Regex Buddy, that's the one. Uh, this is totally sweet. Uh, it lets you, you know, break down the regular expressions all piecemeal. Um, and it certainly helps from the perspective of understanding what's happening behind the scenes. Um, now, his will obviously be much more robust than the thing we're about to build. Uh, but this whole section he has on the tutorial for regular expressions is where I learned it. And frankly, if you go through this, then quite literally you really know regular expressions with some very very extreme exceptions so that's besides the point um how do we even get started well fundamentally regular expressions are just an, a pattern matching tool that uh, buys us lots of different kinds of information um a thing that can match uh is going to be uh for example a token so let's think of an irregular expression which contains just the character right so if my reg regular expression was just this string, right? I have here some stuff that, um, I don't know, I could match that. And A as a letter or G, whatever the thing is, uh, doesn't really matter. That's a flat out match of a character. Um, and what does matching mean? Well, matching means that when I match that expression, uh, or really in this case, this character, um, in the 
I don't know what we call it, right? The, the target, right? The thing that I'm attempting to see if it matches this regular expression. If I see a G there at the current location in the string, I say, great, you matched. I advanced the record pointer. I'm sorry, not record pointer. I advanced the location in the, the offset of the index in the string, and um, we move on to the next token, whatever that is. Um, now, the tokens are going to get more interesting because there's all kinds of different things like repetition, right? What if I have a sequence of, uh, I don't know, four Gs in a row? There must be precisely four of these, and no more, no less. Otherwise, this entire token as a unit fails, right? And so this is where some of the intricacies will come in is, as far as figuring out how we're going to keep track of these things uh, and start getting stuff together. So I've already written up a lot of this code, so I'm going to go ahead and just start getting started. And for a moment, you'll have to just trust me on this guy. Uh, but we're going to need some classes. So how about a context class? That sounds like something we're going to need. So public class context right now uh, is not going to really hold anything interesting in it, um, except maybe um, it'd be nice to know what the string is. So uh, the string that I'm going to match, uh, I'll call it match string, is going to be something that we store uh, right here. So public read only match string blah. <laughs> Oops. Public read only. Where's my cursor? String read only. Blah, blah, blah. This dot match string equals match string. Match a string. All right. I promise I'm usually better at typing than this. It's just so much pressure. Okay. So the way I'm going to structure this thing is that I have a bunch of units of work that you can think of like, um, you know, matching this token, which is a character, is a literal token. Uh, if that is the case, then the context which will be passed into it is going to um, contain the information about what the string is that I'm attempting to match against and what the current offset is um, and all those kinds of nitty-gritty details, right? So let me see if I can't pull up some of my uh, easy reference stuff here. So I got my match string, I got my uh, length and all kinds of fun stuff. So there's going to be some helper functions. I'm going to just throw some junk on here. Uh, public int length. It's going to equal um, match math. Match what? Oh. Match string dot length. Okay, so if I ask the context for its length, it will tell me the length of the string in the context. Um, the other thing that context is in charge of is being the guy who's going to hold on to that record pointer, right? To tell me, and I'm going to keep saying record pointer in these tutorials, and really I just mean whatever this index offset in the current string. Um, so, uh, where, I guess we got to keep track of that. That sounds like something, sounds important. Um, so let's go up here and say, uh, well, okay, yeah, that's fine, I'll do it up here. So, public uh, int offset equals zero. Might as well start there, right? Uh, where else would you start? Well, actually, that's a good question. Um, uh, hopefully, if, if this all goes right, we'll get to the point where uh, we will have expressions that match both forwards and backwards, and we can have variable length, uh, negative look behinds, and um, some other pretty interesting things, which you genuinely have to match in a backwards direction. So, that's that. Um, what else am I going to have here? So something that's going to be kind of nice, I'm going to do a uh, override of to string, because that way it's going to look pretty in the debugger, and this is going to be very, very helpful. So um, the string, whatever, str, is going to be the match string plus um, character turn plus uh, let's see, a new string of dashes whose length is offset, like that, plus the character caret, just like that. I think that's pretty much what I want. Mm, sorry, I'm referring to my notes here off to the side, and uh, trying to make sure that that makes sense. 
Okay, so, so far so good. What this will do is it will um, return string. What it's going to do is it's going to show me where I'm at in the string and where the record, quote, record pointer is, where this offset is um, in, the, in the current context, okay? So let's go ahead and make this a public class so that we can access it from here. And I will say using, sorry, using um, regexlib, which I don't think contains any namespaces. I will say um, var c equals new context, and it takes the string a, b, c, d, e, right? Five characters. And I will say, um, let's come up here. Yeah, we need the console. So using static console. All right. Um, write line. I'm struggling a little bit here, guys. I feel the pressure. I feel some serious pressure. So uh, write line C. Well, that, for one thing, should just print the dang thing out. So maybe we um, go do that and then capture this. Okay. Let's try this. Oh no. Console could not be. Oh, sorry. System.console. Read key. All right, man, see? I'm usually better than this, I promise. All right, so when I print out the context to string, it will show me the string, and it's going to show me a little pointer that says, here's where you're at, right? So if I did something like uh, c dot offset plus equals two, uh, let's say, for example, that we just matched the string a b, um, and now I want to see what the state of the context is. Well, now I see I've matched two items, I've advanced advanced to the offset from zero one to two, and therefore I point over to here, right? So. Um, I'm going to use this, and I found it certainly to be quite uh, very helpful um, to sort of figure out, you know, like where we're at right now and where the um, where the context is at. And there's going to be a lot more information when we display the context as we start adding functionality, like look behinds and um, all kinds of interesting things, like <laughs> backtracking. Uh, how do we keep track of backtracking and all that sort of stuff? So anyway, uh, this is uh, what it will look like when you print out the context, and we're going to use this heavily to make sure that we're on the same page with what <laughs> we think is happening uh, and uh, what is actually happening. So uh, that's all for now. This is already getting a little long, and uh, I guess next time we'll actually start writing some matching tokens. All right, bye.